injecting your personality takes time. And then once you've settled and your eyes settled on those pieces, you think, okay, yes, I really love that vase that I've picked up or I really love that bowl that was handed down by mum even. Mm. That's that piece that I want to be looking at every day. That's what how I want to live and that's how you create your vibe and your style. So welcome to the Dream Home Renovation Podcast. I am your host, Claire, and I'm super excited to have Ross Piper here from Player Interiors. And we are going to be talking all things interior design, interior styling, and of course, some DIY stuff thrown in. This is part of our real life renovation series. So although Roz has a huge amount of talent when it comes to interiors, styling and designing, um, she's also been renovating her own home. So I really think it's important to tap into some of that knowledge and some of that experience. Um, So for those of you who aren't all over your social media, like I am Roz, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Hi Claire, thanks for having me. Thanks for inviting me to this podcast. I'm super, super excited for us both. I'm a stylist. I'm an interior designer. I actually love helping people achieve their look, their dream home, anything from DIY to um, doing it on a budget, but also incorporating for functionality. Functionality for me is number one. How long have I been doing this for? I've been doing it for my entire career, pretty much. Um, I've come from fashion into design. So from my fashion years, coaching people, shops, designing um, briefs, executing briefs in stores, and then basically going into to interior design a couple of years ago when I started Player Interior. I've been doing it for a few years now. I started my interior design course and I finished that last year and pretty much have had quite a few clients reach out to me and want me to design their spaces for them. In terms of player interiors, I started player interiors as an inspiration portal. Look back at like some of the renovations that Troy and I have done and express some knowledge and I suppose inspiration to things that we've done throughout our renovation. So tell me then, did your home renovation inspire you know moving into interior design pretty much so that's what i was just talking to troy about this morning i said you know like these questions that claire's going to ask me it all sort of started when troy and i bought our first home you know it was through budgetary reasons like we just couldn't afford to pay someone to paint the whole house our whole house was like cottage cream back in the 90s right and the front door was green and i didn't want that front door to be green i didn't want the cottage cream i wanted all those beautiful pepper colors and all those colors that were in the 90s so I basically you know through trial and error we never really had YouTube videos or tutorials back then right it was like get a DIY book or basically put the paint on the wall and start painting it hope for the best yeah that's right so that's basically where it came and then I never forget the day when Troy goes all right what else have we got to do now to get this house on the market because we were moving on to our next house right we'd lived there for quite a few years we'd renovated the inside I said we've got to render this house oh my god that had cost us thousands like Oh, absolutely. Thousand. So basically, Troy and I troll and heard it and slapped together some render, and we rented this whole entire house. And it wow. was just. And that's basically what sparked the renovation and the DIYs. We're on to our fourth reno now, hopefully our last, this one here. That's a bit about us, a bit about the backstory and how the DIY all started and how I became like an interior designer and stylist. Yeah, that's really exciting. And I have seen a few other ladies in the social media home design networks that we all follow that have really started to become interior designers and stylists. And I guess it's all through this inspiration. I think it's great. So tell me then, the houses that you renovate before this one so you said this is your fourth house were you renovating those for profit initially or were you planning to stay in them and then just kind of had the itch to move on to the next property what was the what was the thinking there yeah like a bit of both like the first one was our first home uh, we lived in for a couple of years it was actually like an apartment we renovate well we renovated that internally new carpet new bathroom kitchens then we moved on to uh, our bigger home and that's the one mm-hmm. where we rented and we sort of we lived in that for eight years then we did buy an investment property now that was a lot of blood sweat and tears we learned a lot through that renovation yeah that third renovation for us was like that was our investment property that's where because we were living in a country town and we wanted to move we wanted to move coastally right so we renovated that home and I did everything wrong in that renovation okay (laughs) tell us about it that renovation pretty much was it was an investment property and because I was like on that renovating like bicycle where we just wanted to get like you know we had to have the porcelain taps and we had to have a lawful bath and oh gosh an old 1920s California and it was the ornate I I, I ripped out all the fireplaces and put in all new cast iron fireplaces it's similar to what you're doing at the moment you know with all vintage 
look, I was always into that real beautiful country, coastal, vintage, thrifted, but luck at the same time. Yeah, absolutely. Like, I should never have done that. We should never have done that because right. we didn't we didn't profit from that return. We actually right. broke even with that reno. So then when we moved into this home quite a while ago now, over 10 years ago, we'd done uh, a little makeover, like a reno. It was a two-bedroom home. Um, and then from this home, we renovated the kitchen. Um, we put on that deck that everybody's seeing now. If you follow Player Interiors, you'll see the big deck reno and the big Oh, gun. it's incredible. Gun, yeah. uh, we actually put that deck on and it was a two-bedroom home and we lived in it for about 12 years um, yeah. until our son, Luke, is in his 20s now and it was all about him pretty much. We basically said, right, in this time and age, like with, with mortgages going up, prices going up, mm. we need to develop this home, you know. So we literally went under the house, we dug out all the dirt from under the house and put him down there pretty much. Oh, so it was cool. a massive, massive renovation pretty much. Well, it was half of digging out what you now see of my office down there and the right. other room. This renovation was done twice. So this home was renovated twice because the first initial renovation was just to keep it as a two bedroom. And now the second renovation was to open up all the internal walls, downstairs, deck reno, pool, arches, the whole lot. What wow. you're going to at the moment. And that had actually started 2019, just before COVID. Touched on a couple of really interesting points here. And so, for those of you who are listening, you probably know my husband and I flipped houses for about 10 years across three different countries. And it is so different renovating a house for profit versus renovating a house, yeah. a dream home. Absolutely. And I think you touched on that. I think that's one of the biggest mistakes that people make when they're buying and renovating. Because you do, you get on this almost like we need to have. And I think the block plays a big role in this because oh, yeah. I say to my husband all the time, this is a design competition for flipping houses, which doesn't yes. make sense. Yes. So people are spending, and I get the budgets aren't set by them, but you know, $30,000 on a bedroom is not realistic. Not putting realistic. in all, yeah, putting in all the bells and whistles and all of these unique design features into a flip house is not going to bring you a profit. And that is where there's a huge disconnect, I think, with a lot of people renovating when they're renovating for profit versus their dream home. Obviously, we're talking about dream homes. And I think it's super exciting, though, that now you're renovating your dream home for yourself yeah. and your son. And I think the other interesting point you just touched on there is it's okay to renovate one house more than once That's and right. I think we feel like if we've renovated a house we've put money into that house or oh, we need to sell it and move but sometimes especially in this market it's not really very realistic because once you you might get a really nice profit for it but you still are buying in the same market Correct. so if you get you know a couple of million dollars for your house you're still going to have to spend a couple of million dollars on a house that yeah. may not suit your meet, needs yeah. so I think it's really smart to think about what you can do with your own footprint Yep. And adding uh, livable space, like a downstairs uh, basement type area, is value. Every square meter that you add to your home that is livable space is value that will either would, that will give you equity in the future as well. Hundred percent, and that's exactly like you you said. You know, like you you've got to look at the footprint, but also look at where you live. We kept the upstairs the way it was. It was a two mm -hmm. bedroom upstairs. So where the lounge room is now, and where our bar is behind me now is where Luke's bedroom was, where that gas lift window is. Um, and we were going to keep it like that. And it was actually, you said, the block. When you look at the block and you look at all these open plan homes that started coming about, you're like, Troy, I really want this. I, I think we should sell this house, I said mm -hmm. to him. I think we need to do it again. And he goes, why? And I go, because I want an open plan living area. And he goes, well, we can do that. But that meant smashing the actual bathroom down that we built five years ago. Right. Right, and I'd spent a fortune on bloody Portuguese tiles. <laughs> and he's like, I don't care. It's actually cheaper for us to throw down that bathroom, open every wall up in here, put bedrooms downstairs, bathroom downstairs, and reconfigure the upstairs area, then sell this house and buy another house in the same area to do it again. Let's invest in what we've got here and make it work. The block, yes, does give you some kind of inspiration, but it isn't realistic. It's not realistic in terms of, you know, spending all that money in one room, like you said, mm -hmm. and not get that return. But yes, do it if it's your dream home, 
don't do it if it's not your dream home. If it's yeah. an investment property, then just be realistic, set your budgets and stay on track with it. Don't go and blow your budget on, you know, like I did. Again, Portuguese tiles when in five years' time we're going to throw it down. Yeah. So this time when, my, when I did my bathroom downstairs, I thought, okay, what's a way that I'm going to save money? A way that I'm going to save money is by putting VJ panelling all around the walls mm -hmm. and only tying the shower insert. Yeah. And that's the best decision I made four years ago in, during COVID because if I ever do want to change that bathroom, what is it? It's a bit of VJ panel. I can throw that down and retile it or even micro-cement it now if I wanted to because all this micro-cement is in Absolutely. at the moment, right? Exactly. And you can actually do it over tiles. So. Yeah, you know, yeah. these are the things that you've got to like, you know, it's about planning, I suppose, and it's about thinking widely. But yeah. Okay. So let's go back to your current home. We just touched on the fact that you've renovated your kitchen. You've just done your pool area, your outdoor area, the deck, the downstairs. Yeah. So maybe pick one of those projects. Tell us a little bit about that project. What inspired you? And I feel like your home has a very particular style. So I'd love yes. to hear a little bit more about that too. Let's talk a little bit about style. You, when you talk about style, you talk about farmhouse, you talk about Mediterranean, you talk about coastal, you talk about an industrial style, right? That's mm -hmm. what style is what is my style is the way that I want to live mm -hmm. right and the way that I want to live stems back to I suppose my childhood when when I was about seven mum and dad sold their home and we moved to Italy we lived there for three years things didn't go as planned mum and dad went back to a, a country where they'd left 15 years ago that wasn't the same and they thought oh let's go back it's going to be amazing to go back and be with family but things had changed there economically mm -hmm. as well so basically for me my childhood between seven and ten I suppose left an imprint in my mind you know mm -hmm. and I remember running through those cobbled stone streets oh. and the arches you know amazing. the Mediterranean yeah. arches in Puglia because we came from Puglia so down south this beautiful part of Italy um, where Italy is very old as it is but it just it just left this impression and for me living coastally by the ocean there by the, by like the Mediterranean the Ionian Sea it was just something that I wanted to create when we'd moved from country to coastal 15 years ago so mm -hmm. I married a country boy we'd live in country Lisco we moved here to the central coast and it was just like okay I want everything white I want everything to look like it did in our family home in Italy. Mm -hmm. And so the, my favourite project and my style is living a little bit of that. So creating that Mediterranean-inspired feel, the arches. The mm -hmm. arches was for me, and I suppose for Troy, one of the most biggest decisions and most uh, scariest decisions, really. Do we put, we've got these five pillars on this deck that we built 15 years ago. What do mm -hmm. we do with them? Do mm -hmm. we read it. Do we put like a big beam in and open it all up to the pool or do we work with what we've got? And, you know, again, budgetary reason. You set out your budget, you look at it and you go, okay, well, let's put five arches in there. Yeah. Just put five arches up and see how it goes. So we, we cut out a piece of like plastic and I think we spray painted five arches and we lived with it for about two days. Oh, that's a great idea. That yeah. is a, such a great idea. Yeah, to try yeah. before you basically put all that yeah. investment and time Absolutely. into something that you're not necessarily sure if you're going to like. Yeah. So that's basically what we did. And I said, yep, I'm set. Let's create five arches. So we yeah. created the five arches um, and then we designed the the pool around that you know sort of thing and um it was it just went from there so yeah so I suppose my style is a bit of modern a bit of Mediterranean a bit of thrifted a little bit of this a little bit of that yeah uh, and a lot of white and I love that and it's something I think it's definitely a theme that we'll see in these renovation series is creating your dream home is about creating a style that reflects you right. and you know a coastal Mediterranean base with you know your own personality now brought in and Troy's you know that's what makes it your home versus like that's everyone right. else's and that's how you really take a picture or something that's in a magazine or an Instagram that you see that is really inspiring and you make it your own own. And that's, yeah. I think that's some of that yeah. genesis qua that people are always looking to get inspired about. And it's, it's like, you know, and this is what I always say to some of my clients and even some of my friends is like, don't get too caught up on what you see on Instagram. Mm. Instagram, we, we have these, um, I have my page anyway, and I know you too, you would have this for inspiration to show people that, you know, with um, a little bit of ingenuity, a little bit of this and a little bit of that, 
you create your own style and you've got it and you, it's like an outfit really isn't yeah. it it stems back from my fashion days as well you know when I dress women it was like let's make this look your own you know you've got your own imprint make it your own you know mm -hmm. don't don't go and just because she's got that round bar basin don't go buy the exact thing put your little spin on it you know what I mean yeah. put your little spin on it inject your personality into it you know it doesn't need to look exactly the same we're there to give inspiration and to receive inspiration. That's what I mainly talk about when I have these calls with my clients. It's like, what do you want in your home? How do you want to live? Yeah, and then you help them create that as a reality. And we go from there, you know, and it's like send me your inspo and then we can marry the two together and really, really work out a plan on how you want to live in each space. And so tell me then with all of the renovations that you've done currently in your home that you're in now, anything go wrong? Yeah, lots can go wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Um, and I'm going to talk about this real briefly, real quickly if I can, because it was when we were drafting up our pool. As you know, this pool that we've built is, it's it's a, a rib pool. It's all mm -hmm. engineered. So it's, we're three metres off ground level. So we've had to put this pool on top of a concrete wedge and this concrete wedge pretty much sits on the ground and you've got to do like the level that it's kind of like the shallow and the high and the low level the shallow level and the high level when we designed this pool we didn't realize that the actual end of the pool and I'm pointing to it Claire yeah it in the middle of the third arch so I've got like a corner piece that ends in the middle of the third arch this all goes back to planning I mm. cannot stress it enough the worst thing you can do when you start renovating or when you're even thinking about renovating is do not rush the process yeah you cannot rush the process like you've got to really take your time you've really got to take your time and I suppose this comes into if you want to DIY because try not DIY this whole build out stuff. we haven't had any trade person come in so I actually started designing this pool before I did my interior design course so learning the principles of design learning how to design learning how to use SketchUp learning how yeah. to do mood boards and all that I didn't then do any of that before we actually submitted to council our idea of putting this pool in Wow. Mm -hmm. And you guys, so you didn't have a pool company come in. You no. have completely built your own pool completely from scratch. Completely from scratch. So, okay. what we, so what we actually did was first up, we found the place. Well, first up, we wanted to put the pool in the ground. And then I thought, I said to Troy, why are we going to go from like three metres up in the air and, oh, hang on, I forgot the drinks. Oh, hang on, let me go grab another right. beer. Oh, hang on, right. I don't want to be going up and down stairs to serve drinks. Mm -hmm. So then we thought, okay, Let's wait a little longer. Let's submit to council off the, um, we wanted to basically go off the house into the backyard, but raise them. Yeah. Okay? So a lot of people, and I get a lot of questions like about our rendered walls. Now our rendered walls are actually privacy walls around the pool. When I designed this pool with the draftsman, I didn't realise that the end of the pool, the seventh metre of the pool deck was going to end up halfway through the arch. That was a massive design mistake on all our behalves in that respect because I didn't know how to design. Right. I didn't use what I wanted. So it's know. visually jarring. So mm -hmm. instead of having all of the view from each of the arch be the pool and a consistent view, you've got... And the actual fence line finishing on the end of the right. third arch, it yeah. actually ends in the middle of the arch. Right. Which means that once we put our, our glass fence up, there's going to be a T piece where the fence goes on the back part of the actual deck mm -hmm. and it meets up in the middle of the arch. Right. Now, had I had designed it all over again, mm -hmm. I would have probably designed it so that the pool ended at the end of the arch. Right. Definitely planning. It's definitely about not rushing it. Mm -hmm. and Leap. Absolutely. And I think to your point about planning it, so you've had a lot of projects in one space. And this is something that we've learned because we've made this mistake a few times in our renovations where you don't always see the whole picture. So you're thinking like, okay, let's put a deck on, let's design a beautiful deck, let's put the arches on. And then you're like, oh, let's put a pool in. And so instead of looking at the entire landscape of that exterior area and designing the entire area 
Mm -hmm. um, almost like an aerial first and then going, okay, how are we going to lay everything out? How are we going to walk through it? Similar to how you do an interior of, an, of a house. Right. You know, you start with the function first. How does it flow? And then you move to let's make it pretty. And then you move to, okay, let's create emotion. Our exteriors are exactly the same. And I think this is a challenge that we can have. And if you've never renovated before, how do you even know that? And that's, yeah. you know, these mistakes are very, very, very common, but they're expensive mistakes because you can't exactly go, okay, well, let's just rip up the pool and start all over again, you know? So it's, that's why these conversations I think are good because, you know, yeah. for those of you who haven't renovated before, there's a lot that you just don't think about. Like, and um, when you people say, oh, just take your time, sometimes you don't really know what that means That's uh, right. because you're like, well, do I just like keep walking through and figuring it all out? Yeah. Um, a huge piece of advice to somebody who just thinking about renovating, maybe renovating their first house is to really think about how you want the entire flow to feel, not just that one space. Yeah. And that's why I always think too, like if you're going to renovate one room in your house, like a kitchen, for example, once you have finished that kitchen, you are 100% going to start renovating another room in your house because right. once you have put something new in, the rest of the house is going to look pretty dingy. That's why I always tell people when you're designing a room, take a step back. And even if you're only going to design that one room, look at the entire house flow first. Because if you install a 30, 40, sometimes like it's some kitchens are expensive these days. Yeah. Like we just got a quote for over $60,000 for our kitchen, which we were like, no thanks. But <laughs> There, I mean, that's the price of kitchens. You're not going to rip that out in two years' time because you've like realized actually, if we had opened up that wall, we would have had more space, more flow, walk in pantry, whatever it may be. So, yeah, I think it's a really important point that you raised there, Roz. I think that's yeah. that's great. And things can go wrong, you know, and this is a, especially if you're doing one room at a time as well in one space at mm. a time and you don't have an overall picture of the way that you want to live because, you know, due to budgetary reasons or whatever, yep, yeah, let's touch tackle the kitchen then we'll tackle the bathroom or we'll tackle the living area another time and then we'll do this and we'll do that and this is a bit of what happened with this home because in my head we were going to do downstairs and we were going to up selling it we were not going to stay here right but then everything because as I said to you we had ideas of putting in a concrete pool even mm -hmm. just the, the prices were just the, the costs were just like phenomenal phenomenal mm -hmm. Like you just look at it and then finally we came across this company called Modern Pools and they had this maxi rib, well, what Norellum Pools call a maxi rib. So they're all basically uh, reinforced ribs that can actually sit on the actual concrete pad and then you build the deck around it. Right. And so when Troy and I sat down and we we put all the um, costs together. I went out and did my own builder's course and because uh, we'd done, he'd already built another home before, so he mm -hmm. couldn't do it. That was my turn to do it. We set out on this massive journey to DIY every little bit ourselves. And luckily for me that I have a husband that can weld, that understands um, a little bit about engineering. Right. Because, you know, the engineers, the engineering report required this beam and that bracing oh and it's very oh, mathematical it's, isn't it i'm very lucky and grateful that i have troy in that respect that understands the engineering of it all apart from that yeah the arches and had i have had a bit more of a vision before we started the deck renovation because as i said joe was going to have it all open i wasn't going to have arches we were going right. to put in a huge beam to hold up that that deck roof and we were going to just have it all open and then the arches came into play and the mm. pool will skew if, you know, and I'm like, every time I look at that, I go, that was a massive mistake. Do we reapply? Do we go back to council? That's going to be another $7,000 if we go back to council and, and add on another half a metre that we'd have to come out to meet that pillar. It's a design fault that I'm going to have to live with that I will, I will hide it. So that was going to be my next question. So from a styling perspective, I think this is something for everyone to remember as well. Mistakes will be made. And mm -hmm. it doesn't really matter how many houses you've renovated. Let me tell you, mistakes are made because yeah. you don't know everything yeah. and every house is different. Absolutely. But you can get creative and you can figure out how to hide things. So what's your plan from a styling perspective or landscaping perspective yeah. to hide that one up? So because we're also like three metres up from ground level, we can't just have floating glass panels there. I mean, I'm going to have the little mm -hmm. that's with the beautiful glass and that's going to frame the backdrop. And then we've got to have those steel, the 
steel balustrade on the top that connects oh okay glass panel that's floating which i'm not really happy about then we've also got to have it in between the arches as well because we're three meters off the regulations or whatever so i'm gonna probably just use the glass for sure probably put a pot plant there or something that's gonna focus more on that feature rather than the fault Definitely. Yeah, absolutely. And there's some really beautiful hanging, like creeping and hanging yeah. plants, you know, like jasmine yeah. have a really beautiful aroma that can yeah. plants, especially for an outdoor area. I mean, look, I'm a huge plant fan. I've got myself a little Green. indoor garden. <laughs> uh, I don't have an overly green thumb, but I am keeping it alive. But there are some beautiful things that you can add that will add some greenery. And within a couple of years, that will grow up. And, you know, that yeah, thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because the thing is, the other thing is too, is like it might irk you. Most people probably won't really notice it because they're too busy looking at everything else. But you have to live in the house, so you want to make it so that you you don't walk out every day and that's the only thing that you see. That's right. So yeah, a lot can go wrong. Be prepared. Be definitely prepared. But also turn a, a negative into a positive. And even if you're not DIYing it, I think it's the case, regardless of who, yeah. whether you have builders in. I mean, the plans could be wrong. Engineering yeah. could have made a mistake. They could, like, there's just so much that can go wrong. I, I definitely agree with you having a a flexible approach yeah. is very important otherwise you will go you will send yourself crazy <laughs> and i've learned that's that's the thing you know you learn every day you learn every day i'm being a designer now i can only draw from my experiences you know exactly like, that we'll do it this way or you know and revise and revise we completed a project where a lot of things went wrong in in terms of like know, create budget blowouts sort of thing like there, there could be like you know some concrete that didn't go right or a flooring that didn't go right mm-hmm. you know where you think okay they've got to come back so or, or even paint you do all your swatch colors and then you look at the paint and you go okay uh, that's not the paint that i ordered well there's a thousand dollars worth of paint that we've just printed that's right not really- you know so they're 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 the little things that can go wrong as well there are things that you can fix along the way and you, you've got to be prepared definitely be prepared prepared for things that can go wrong so as we talked about previously you know your style i think is really distinctive it's a, it's a mediterranean coastal style yes. so if someone was to wanting to achieve the same style of you what would be the five tips that you would give them if you wanted to achieve this style in your home i would start with a neutral base mm-hmm Definitely number one, neutral base. Bring in lots of natural lighting. You need your natural lighting. You know, think of where you're going to be, the spaces you're going to be living in and also natural materials. So mm-hmm. incorporate natural lighting, natural materials. Think of mood lighting because I think a lot of us don't like to live with the light on anymore. Like we mm. love to create lots of mood lighting where your lamps are going to go. Also where your strip lighting is going to go. Strip lighting creates beautiful mood lighting. Definitely add in handcrafted pieces, vintage pieces, thrifted pieces. Make that look your own. You're not going to get that from Kmart or a big block. You know what I mean? Like yeah. like they're, they're mass produced. They're quick, easy fixes. These little mm-hmm. tr- trays that you see, these, you know, um, what I bought from Kmart versus what I styled. They're great for a quick little fix, but if you, you know, style takes time. Mm. It's time to create. Your vibe, your mood takes time to create. The way that you're going to create it is by introducing your beautiful vintage thrifted pieces. Mm-hmm. Um, and fifth is always adding greenery. So there it might- brings life into a home, doesn't it? Like it yeah. really does. I do think that plants, fragrance, they help you create the feeling in yeah, a home. Definitely. Because if you've got that beautiful green backdrop out there, you need to introduce that into the home. And that that brings in layering, that brings in texture, mm. it brings in warmth as well. They're my top five to say neutral base, natural lighting, natural material, uh, create your vibe with mood lighting and warm, inviting lighting. Add in handcrafted pieces and add in your greenery. Great advice. And I think you can adopt adopt that advice really to any style. You can start with a different base yeah. and you can change out your lighting, you can change out your colours. And I think those last three elements are timeless because yeah. ultimately lighting your unique artisan pieces and your plants or your life that you bring into your home is going to create that personal element, isn't it? And I mean, you may not be one that likes thrifted pieces. You not mm. may one that wants that you might be one that wants to follow more that trend you know what I mean like just don't get caught up too much in all those little trinkety things because this is what I used to do I used to do that I used to go mm-hmm. to buy the latest vase buy that latest candle little 
funky little, you know, trinkety thing. Mm -hmm. It all ended up in a box. It all ended up in a cupboard and I had to give it away. It just ended up with too much stuff. Yeah, you know. So just yeah. choose wisely and that's why I say style takes time. Injecting your personality takes time. And then once you've settled and your eyes settled on those pieces, and you you think, okay, yes, I really love that vase that I've picked up or I really love that bowl that was handed down by mum even. Mm. That's that piece that I want to be looking at every day. That's that's what how I want to live and that's how you create your vibe and your style. That's pretty much how I live. You share a lot of this on Instagram. If you're looking for Roz, you can find her at Player Interiors on Instagram and you are inspire a lot of people. You So why don't you tell us about who who inspires you, you know, when you're looking for inspiration for your business, for your home? Okay, so I suppose like we touched on that a little bit before. Firstly, for me, um, nature, nature, looking around. I look at like all the beautiful colours that nature. So I'm very warm. I love warm tones I'm mm -hmm. a very neutral lover what brings me joy is the greenery from outside you know like I said in those warmer tones Instagram inspires me you inspire me every day <laughs> you do your work, you know and I get inspiration from many many creators out there there's yeah. so many beautiful creators out there that I just love to wake up in the morning with my cup of coffee like oh let's see what Claire's doing let's see what Kirstie's doing let's see what Mel's doing let's see what Sue's doing Pinterest drop a Pinterest board start bringing yeah. in what you love through Pinterest designers my favorite designers would have to be Leanne Ford Oh, Leanne Ford, yeah. I mean, I've been watching Leanne Ford for years. I just yeah. love the way that she can actually go on site. And if she can't find that pendant, she will plaster that pendant. That's right. Exactly. She just makes that's, it. That's how I am. Yeah. That's exactly what I love to do. I love, you might be on a country farm and you're like, okay, where's Bunnings? Like it's three hours away. Mm. Stop Let's just turn this pendant into something special with a bit of plaster of Paris or some concrete. Exactly. And, you know, to that point, because a lot of people, and I know I see it sometimes, and I, I get this sometimes on it, uh, TikTok and Instagram, wherever, yeah. uh, you know, people will have their own opinions about DIY stuff and all that kind of stuff. But you've got people like Leanne Ford proving she is a high-end designer. Yep. You know, she creates beautiful high-end homes. And mm -hmm. in those homes, look at Joanna Gaines, you know. Uh, she was thrifting her staged furniture when she first started. It doesn't need, you don't have to spend a fortune no. to get a luxury feel. And you're probably going to mess up the first few DIYs and that's okay. But, you know, you can still create that really luxe finish and unique finish by doing a few things yourself. 100%. And yeah. this is the thing, you know, rather than going there and buying that little $5 or $10 trinket, go to a thrift shop, go get mm. something unique that's something that that you know like that's going to make you set your space apart from the rest yeah Athena Calderone very high end mm -hmm. she she might have that that vase that was handed down from a great grandmother there that looks absolutely beautiful that you think oh my god where do I get one of those from? yeah yeah. You know, DIY is not just about building something from scratch. It's about repurposing yeah. to set it apart from the rest. And you've got to live in the home. Yeah. And even though we make our homes look like they're show homes, there is dirt on that floor. Those curtains yeah. need washing. That lounge needs a whole, you know, scrub down. There's a lot of inspiration out there, Claire. That's it, exactly. What are you most excited about as far as trends that you can see coming in the next, you know, yeah. year or so? Yeah. So for me, um, look, you know, I don't get too caught up in trends, as we all say, don't get too caught up in it. But what I'm most excited is colour drenching. I'm really oh, into the colour it. drenching. You know, you know, the, the burgundies, the deep reds, the chocolates at the moment, you know, don't be afraid to just to when you're putting colour on the wall, throw it on your ceiling as well, like make it all really creates that cocoon feel. But a lot of people have this perception of, oh my God, if I put colour on my ceiling, it's going to come down on it's, it's actually the opposite mm. um you know like i've been thinking about lime washing the entire space up here and also doing my ceiling because um i think that and, and don't get confused guys this is a mistake that i've done do not paint your wall your ceilings with wall paint big mistake okay i use wall paint Shh. okay <laughs> yeah i did that clear it was there, there's another mistake, right? Um, went and got Lexicon half, painted all the walls. Yep, let's put it on the ceiling and then uh, the light shines in and I've got lines absolutely oh, everywhere. okay. Uh, yeah. it, it's like, you know, if there's a lot of light in your space and there's lots of natural light coming in, be wary. 
it will show those lines. You need to use sealing paint and sealing paint can be tinted. It can. And it will always look a little bit different because it is yep. a different type of paint. Right. Uh, as right. someone who colour drenches every single room <laughs> in my house, yep. but I actually, I must admit I'm guilty. I use, um, I use wall, wall paint, paint on the ceiling. Yeah. I just use the yep. same paint. And I completely agree with you. Colour drenching is a great way. I actually think when you paint your ceiling a different colour, you're actually creating lines and yes. a contrast. And that is what makes a small room feel smaller right. whereas when you have the entire space the one color you're actually smoothed out that entire view so there's yep. not nothing that's really jarring your eye yep. and the room feels bigger i know yep. it feels crazy but um, i'm all for and it then the other trend that i think that i think i'm going to make this trend <laughs> get rid of your cornices unless you've got a beautiful old queenslander like yourself or mm -hmm. you've got work or you've got some beautiful you know ceiling roses or some yeah fret work on you get rid of your, your 80s or 70s cornices square set those corners and color drench i'm really really excited for color drenching and i'm really really excited for um lots of curves mm -hmm. as well lots of curves this season coming up i mean they've been around for a little bit now and interesting textures really interesting tech warmer wood tones mix your wood tones i think that mixing wood tones there's this myth that you can't have a light floor with dark furniture up out you so can three to four different wood tones it's got to be complimentary also and if you want to see how Roz has um mixed and matched her wood tones you can check it out over on her instagram anything any big plans for the next few months any new project we do we have a couple we have still got a crazy pave around the pool we're going to be installing that glass fence and we also have a backyard makeover coming oh fun i've got, I've got some um tips and tricks down below the pool there i think mm -hmm. i'm going to be I'm starting to share a few stories on um, some products that have we're introducing into that area soon as well. Oh, the good. Stay tuned. Yeah. Stay tuned for that. And it's story. perfect time for the, for the summer. The summer. Lovely. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us today. I'm sure everyone got a huge amount out of it. Um, I, I appreciate so. you sharing your wins and your failures. <laughs> we all have some wins and failures, and it's always it's yeah. always about learning from them <laughs> and just getting better. I mean, like I said in the last interview, you know, you don't walk into your job on the first day and know what you're doing. Experience. Don't be too afraid to pick up that tool. Don't be too afraid to give it a go yourself. If you've enjoyed this podcast, make sure to subscribe to the Dream Home Renovation podcast. We'll have a new episode coming next week and share with family and friends who love to renovate or who are just inspired to hear more about design and renovation. Thank you so much for joining us today, Roz. And if you want to see more of, of Roz's work and all of the projects that she discussed today, you can head on over to Player Interiors. Um, all the links will be in the show notes. You can check her out. And otherwise, Thanks for following and I will see you in the next episode.